So, okay, one thing that I want you to know is mm, the source of this equation, where does that come from? It's a comparison between what falls and what falls. If you say suction and net gravitational force, you get one part. If you say turbulence force or something, you don't get any part. So you have to know not just how to use this equation, but uh, you know that transient A, stratified to non stratified, is a competition between net gravitational force and suction force that cause the wave to grow or wave growth suction force. Okay. When, when we look at this, you see there's a lot of estimation, right? First of all, um, Taylor theory expansion, we take just the first term, dAg by dH, or just delta H term, not delta H square. So this is linear approximation, which is wrong, uh, not wrong, but not exact to begin with, right? And what about this? This is not exact either. Because this is not the same as that, right? So there are some approximation. But even though we don't know what it is, we try to model it. It doesn't stop at least Taiko and Dabler to work more on it. Okay? If Taiko and Dabler say, hey, stop, I don't do anything anymore. We don't have any of this theory. So even though Sometimes you get stuck. Don't stop, okay? Alright, after we have that, keep in mind that there are some approximations in this equation already. It may not be perfect. We have to validate it against experimental result, okay? Which page show you? You read a book for the class? Of course, every time, right? Which page show you that comparison between title download model? and experimental data. Figure 3.8? Really? I don't see anything in three, experimental data and 3.8. Maybe 3.11? Page 75, 3.9? 3.9 doesn't have any experimental data part. But page 7, not, not 79, 75, 3.11. You see the model from Tatar Dabler, right? The dashed line and the comparison. So this is for the case of and water in one inch pipe. So the dashed line, and you see the square thing. So that square is stratified circle and triangle that is not stratified. It kind of match, right? So it's good enough. In addition to that, what else is the assumption here? Surface is flat. Right? Tau i equal to tau w. That is to get edge value. Right? Whatever assumption that we use in combined momentum equation, it inherit and show it here. Alright, next from transition A is transition B. So let's say we know that it's not stratified flow. The next question to ask is, is that going to be angular flow or not? So transition A is the transition from something else, or intermittent time and this bubble flow, to annular flow. Okay. We want to know if it is annular flow or not. Okay. Before we can check transition B, we need to check transition A first. Okay. And only when it is not stratified, then we can check transition B. If it is already stratified, we cannot check transition B. Okay. So once we, once we know that it's not stratified flow, now, Tata Bella come with the, the way to model, okay, uh, 
but they had all come with the model to check if it is another flaw or not. Okay, look at this one. They said they found that average, on average, slug liquid hole up is about 0.7. Another 30% in the slug body is N. Okay. So if we are going to form wave, that wave is not 100% liquid, it's 70% liquid. Okay. And the assumption here is that okay, the wave looks like a sine wave. Okay. The magnitude on the top and on the bottom, they are the same. Okay. So if I have very thin liquid level, the assumption here is at most, the wave can grow, the wave height can be as much as the liquid level height. So whenever it grows, some part of it has to go down so that some part of it go, can go up, right? That's what it is. So this means it cannot grow more than the thickness that it already has. You agree? If, if you assume that it grow like a sine wave, so part of it has to go down, and the amount that go down will make it go up. And at most, the wave can go down until it reach the floor, or I mean, the reach the bottom part of the pipe. So, so this means if the height is less than half of the pipe it cannot go up and reach the top part of the pipe. Agree? If the height of the liquid in the pipe is at the half, so when one part go down to reach the bottom, it can go up that tall, or another half of the pipe and it reach the top. If it reach the top, it's not, it's not at enough flow. Okay. Like when we have an flow, the film break when it can reach the top and it forms something else. So if it can reach the top, it's not an flow. If we have a very thin liquid layer, it is. Okay. So in theory, part five, right, is the criteria. Okay on the early study. So half of the level, if the film value is at half of the don't, don't take a note yet. Don't take a note yet because there is something more. Because there is finding from Bunny et al. So if the height, not the time to add anything yet. If the height is at the half, theoretically, it can, the bottom of the web can go and reach the bottom part of the pipe and the top part of the wave can go and reach the top part of the pipe, right? If it is at half. Okay, now, then we found that it is not 100% liquid. So this means when the level is at the half, what is the actual liquid hole up? It's not half because it's like half multiplied by 0.7, right? The desired condition to not have, if it is at half, we don't have annular flow. Make sense? But this part is not 100% liquid. It has some bubble in it. Okay. So we say, hey, H2 now is about the same as whole up for this case to simplify everything but it is actually not okay when whole up is at 0.5 yes h tilde is 0.5 to h tilde is a liquid height divided by pipe diameter right when it's at one it's at one too but if it is between 0.5 and one they are not identical they are close to each other but not identical Alright, we say that hey, when it is at half, 
it is a condition that we won't have another soul. If it is half or more than half, we don't have another soul. And at that half, the actual liquid hold up will be 0.5 multiplied by 0.7. Okay, because we said this liquid part has liquid hold up of 0.7. And we say height is about the same as hold up. So we say, okay, H2 though, about 0.35. Is the transition boundary. If it is less than 0.35, we have annular flow. If it is more than 0.35, we either have intermittent flow or dispersed bubble flow. One of that. Okay, question, Isaac. Yeah, you're talking about annular flow before, and you're talking about if you have the team, team that does that happen always for another flow that you have like a thin uh, liquid flow? How another flow look like in vertical pipe? In vertical pipe, we have film everywhere, right? Film around the inner part of the pipe. For horizontal flow, um, the model here is based on the, um, the idea that if the liquid film can climb up the wall and reach the top part, then it is analog flow. The stability of that can, if we have the film, and that film ever have wave, if it have if it have wave, but the wave doesn't make the part the doesn't merge with the top part of the pipe, it's still annular flow. So if you have pipe flow and somehow it's liquid, we check transition A, it is not stable to be stratified flow. The suction force is small. Okay. Maybe it's like this. Okay. And from time to time, maybe it's have a little bit of film on the top. Okay. From visual observation point of view, we other research groups say if the film merge to the top part, then it is uh, angular flow. If it doesn't, it's stratified flow. Some researcher doesn't distinguish between stratified flow and angular flow. They call it separated flow. And we call and they calculate the friction from vented ball fraction instead. Okay, that model is Zhang Unified model. The group in Tausa. We talk more about it later. So if you have this kind of flow, film on the bottom is thick. The question is, this film, if it forms a wave, can it merge with the top part of the pipe or not? If it can, then it's it cannot be, it is not stable enough to be analog flow. Good? And the height of film will be 0 0.7 multiplied by 0 0.5 or 0 0.35. You get it? Where's that 0 0.7 come from? Huh? Where's that 0 0.7 come from? Bunny, right? It comes from Bunny, isn't it? Bunny et al. She told us that it is 0.7. 0.7 is where. Okay, let's take a look at the actual flow pattern map. You see this, right? This line is transition B. Okay, H L T L equal to 0.35. Okay. This line is transition A or competition between suction force and net gravity force. Okay. But near it all, that dash line, okay, that dash line is based on the bubble inside the liquid film, if we ever have liquid film. And we say that, hey, if we have slug flow in the slug body, slug is an aerated uh, chunk of liquid. 
it has some air to it. So if the aerated, if the aerated film is half of the pipe, then the fluctuation can cause it to merge with the top of the pipe. Then it can not be annular flow. It has to be intermittent flow of this bubble flow. Okay. If we use point five, experimentally, it is this line. So when something is not annular flow, we say it is annular flow. You see this dot? We have some mistake in the prediction, misclassification. But point three five is happen to be better. Okay. Make sense? This boundary is linked directly with slack flow. Because it linked directly with the slack flow, that's why we use slack body liquid walk. So we say, hey, it has the film. But that film cannot be any film. If the film can reach the top part, it becomes intermittent flow or dispersed bubble flow. But that film has to be part of the slack, which is slack body. Slack body has liquid walk of 0.7. Okay? So that's why they use 0.35. Make sense enough? A little bit. Okay, let's continue. Transiency. Transiency is about when we check transient A, we found that it is stratified flow. Now we want to know if it is going to be stratified smooth or stratified wavy. Okay. So this is if the velocity of gas is high enough, we blow, turn on the fan and blow on water, we create wave. Okay? If the velocity is high enough, we can have wave, but the velocity may not be high enough to cause instability of the stratified flow. It just makes wave, but it doesn't make the flow to be unstable. Before we check transition C, we have to check transition A first. Check transition A and make sure that it is stratified flow, then check if it is stratified baby or not. The criteria for this. Okay, good question. If you check transition C and E and then start with stratified flow, you go straight to transition C, right? Correct. If A say it is stratified flow, we go directly to C. Not B. Okay. We go ready to see. Criterion for wave initiation, Titel Doppler use Jeffrey. Okay. This is suitable for horizontal and upward flow. It is the uh, initiation of wave causing by the shear force, exerted by gas, overcome viscous force of the liquid phase. If it is so viscous, whatever we blow it, it doesn't form wave. Okay, so it's a competition between the shear force from the gas and the viscous force that we hold them together or the liquid phase. Make sure you know this, okay? So the equation from Jeffrey is Vg minus Vc squared multiplied by Vc greater than some or this left side is shear force. Right size is the viscous force. 4 mu delta rho g cos theta over rho l rho g s. New parameter s from Jeffrey paper is 0.01. It's a dimensionless shattering coefficient used in wave initiation calculation. It's come from that paper. Okay. And Cw is the wave propagation velocity. We can assume that wave propagation velocity is about Velocity of liquid phase. Okay. Wave travel at the velocity of liquid phase. And we say, okay, Vg is a lot faster than Cw. Okay, otherwise you don't have wave, right? Put it in, we get this form, do the math, we get this one. The second line is done already, but of course, we want it in dimensionless form. And you are expect to be able to go from here 
to here. Two. I'll derive based on this equation the dimensionless group is this thing. Okay? Or something close. So from dimensional equation, you can derive dimensionless, dimensionless parameter. With this, we get new parameter, parameter k. Parameter k is f square. f doesn't have anything to do with liquid phase velocity directly, right? But now we multiply by Raynaud number of liquid phase based on superficial velocity. This means it can be calculated right up front. Okay? But f value F value, where's that F value? F value we have to get, or oh, F value can be calculated right up front too, right? It doesn't require the knowledge of H. Okay, now let's take a look at other term. Eventually we have K greater than 2 over Vg tilde square root Vl tilde square root s, and s is 0.01. Okay? Everything dimensionless already. Okay? If you use this equation, use everything in si to make life easy. Otherwise, use that one because it's dimensionless form. No worry about the unit conversion. So if k is more than that, this means we have a uh, wave, stratified wave. So this equation is on what page? So test is on the book, right? 72. Equation what? 354. As done before, this criterion can be represented in non dimensional form as k greater than or equal to 2 over square root something, 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 something. Okay, so this is the transition to stratified baby. Okay, stratified baby. Does it make sense? k has greater than something, and k is depend on VSL. VSL is vertical axis. Okay, vertical axis is of the flow pattern map. So let's take a look at something like this. So this is, um, oh, maybe this not true. Let me, let's go back. Okay, this one. That line, that dash line is transition C. So when I have two low VSL, K may not be enough, but when I increase it, it could be enough. If you have too high VSG, F square is a lot already, so I may satisfy the um, transiency uh, criterion. Good? Before we check C, we go directly from A. Okay? So next one, I think is uh, about wave formation, but downward flow. Okay? This wave growth is based on shear force and viscous force, right? And one of the assumptions is gas velocity is a lot higher than liquid velocity. But we can also form the wave, even though we don't have much gas flow. Do you agree? Maybe you doubt, hey, if I don't blow the wind on top of liquid, how can we have wave? Put a pipe, downward incline, pour water in. Is it going to go straight down? No, it, it forms some wave, right? Because the gravity itself creates some disturbance or instability of the interface and forms the wave by itself. That is transient K. Okay? Wave can be generated because of instability of interface. Can occur for Negligible gas flow rate. Even though we don't have any gas flow, but if liquid flow too fast, we can have wave. So, Bunny et al. 1982 suggests this based on Fraub number for transition K. 
Before we check transition K, we have to check transition A. If we find that it's not stratified flow, then we can check transition K or C first. If we check transition C, it's not ready, we don't stop yet. If it is double flow, we also have to check transition K in addition to transition C. How do I get the L? Combined momentum equation has to be solved. Otherwise, we have to use 3.6, figure 3.6, right? Based on X and Y to get H2 dog. From H2 dog, use geometric relationship to get HO up. From HO up, we can calculate the L. Can you? Huh? Yes? Okay. H2, HL value come from solving combined momentum equation or use the chart. Alright? If round number is more than 1.5, this is the condition to have certified baby in downward flow. If it is not downward flow, and this condition satisfied, it doesn't mean anything. It has to be downward flow. So that you can check K back. K, transition K. If it is not downward flow, don't check transition K. Good? Last one. Intermittent to this bubble flow. So once we check transition A, it's not stratified flow. We check transition B, it's not angular flow. Then we have to check the last one, transition D, to see if it is intermittent or this bubble flow. Okay. Transition D, we say here that okay, it's a competition between turbulent forces and net buoyancy forces. Okay. Gas pocket is shattered into small dispersed bubble that makes with liquid phase. If liquid phase blo liquid velocity is high enough, so when liquid travel very fast. It doesn't move like stratified flow, but it has fluctuation, like a turbulent flow like. Because of that, turbulent force break it apart. Turbulent force is estimated from here. One half rho v square uh, SI. Okay. And S prime is turbulent radial velocity fluctuation. S prime bar equal to zero. Okay, but V prime square bar is not zero. All right, that's come from turbulent force theory. By the way, when I say viscous force, turbulent force, there's no such kind of force. It's just the name. Okay, you you know right? There is no actual viscous force, or there is no actual turbulent force. It's a force, mechanical force that name like that for engineer to wrap up our mind around it and understand it easily. Okay. Okay, net buoyancy forces, turbulent force, calculate like this, equate them. But first we have to approximate how much is the V prime square. Yes. Oh we have to go. Uh okay. So we will continue transition D next time. Sure. Uh, I said, please go there, turn everything on, okay? And the rest, let's, let's move there.
put that off of the system. Okay, and here we are going to take a look at two-phase flow. All right. Uh, let's turn on just liquid phase first. Okay, now we have liquid phase on. So this is the flow equivalent to flow in a horizontal well. Okay. Liquid calm and have some small wave okay you can consider this as stratified flow right stratified flow does it go up not yet okay now let's let's turn on gas, gas a little bit okay and oh, oh oh yeah just 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 turn on gas A little. A little. With gas flow, this is on this part is a little bit downward flow. So we have kind of stratified flow, right? And what is that flow in the jacket part? That we call Churn flow is checking up and down. Okay, and this is churn flow. It's kind of developing of the slack flow. Okay, but over here, okay, now we have wave, right? Look at that. Isn't that stratified wavy? Yeah. Okay, now let's lowering it down so we have upward flow to show slack flow. Okay. Notice that the liquid level can change with this tense. Right? When we're lowering that down, flow pattern is very sensitive to angle. Downward flow inclined to have stratified flow. Upward flow tends to have intermittent flow or slack flow. Okay? And this is intermittent flow. Aerated liquid body that moving, that is slug body. Okay, that's what we call slug body. And this part is the liquid film. Liquid film can fall backward. Inclination angle, mostly governed by angle. The part over here is still kind of churn flow. All right? And what happened in here is what do you call this one? Annular. Kind of annular flow. Falling film, right? It's a falling film. So this is a falling film. And this part, film can flow backward. Right? Film can flow backward. All right, now can you close the valve? No, no, from here, from here. Close the valve, make everything flow kind of slow so we can see elongated bubble flow. Lower liquid flow rate, gas flow rate, yeah. And maybe shove the valve half half. Let it go slower. Okay. 
the number of slug per unit time is slug frequency. Okay. To get slug frequency, we can just count how many slug per minute and convert it to per second. Okay, that is slug flow. Uh, let's call that bar, the number bar, a little bit more. Close. Oh, you cannot do that. Okay, all right. All right. And open gas, open liquid valve more. Oh, is this not yet? Okay, now we have kind of elongated bubble flow. Right? Yes. Okay, do you have some kind of liquid loading? Open, open those two valves. Oh, okay, here it's calm. So we have, not yet. Open, open, feeling and dropping there. So you can see that the slug is not slug anymore. It's not aerated, right? It's just a liquid moving up. Okay. And right now we have flow rate of water about two bar per minute and air point oh one bar per minute. Try to flow up. So what do you call this? Elongated bubble flow. Is that going to be sensitive to angle too? Let's have it like uh, lowering it down a little bit more and see what happens. So notice the film height. Look at the film height. Are we going to have more film height or less film height when we're lowering it down? Are we going to have more frequent slug or less frequent slug? Slug frequency change with the angle. Can you lowering it down more? Be careful of that pipe. Take it out off from the way. Yeah. Okay. What's going on here? Increasing slug frequency. Is it? So the slug frequency. What about what about over here? Upward flow. You see that that bullet shape in the inner pipe. So that bullet shape. That's a elongatable flow in the pipe too, right? It go up. And we kind of, when we flow slow enough, we can see the bullet shape look like a developing slug flow. So this is a nice developing slug flow. Right, this part is a developing slug flow. And we still have falling frame over here. What about the horizontal section? What happened to this? Do we have more slug or less slug? Oh, a little bit more difficult to say anything because we don't actually do the measurement. So what you can see here is, early on, we have several bubbles. And bubble they merge together to form a longer bubble. Okay? So this means it takes some length to be fully developed. Alright? Uh, right now it's 12.20. Thank you for coming. Okay? We'll see you next week.